This is Small Business Conversations with Akona Matroba, unlocking essential advice, opinions, and key issues that affect South Africa's small business community. Welcome to yet another edition of the Small Business Conversations podcast, Maniweb's weekly SME show highlighting critical issues affecting South Africa's small business environment. This week, we will be expanding on a discussion we started a few weeks ago about dormant companies and the possible tax implications businesses might face for not filing their returns on time. The initial episode stirred a lot of discussion and I received several queries from listeners looking to get further clarity on the matter, particularly on how to go about deregistering a company with the CIPC. If you have not listened to the previous episode, I invite you to do so on the Manweb website, Spotify or Apple Music. In this week's episode, though, I'm joined by Krista Kloko, the Senior Manager of Companies and Closed Corporations at the CIPC. Krista is going to help us understand how the process of deregistering a company with the CIPC works. Welcome to the show, Krista. Akuna, thank you very much for having us. It's such a pleasure. So kicking off the discussion... I would like you to help shed some light on just the number of companies that have been flagged as dormant companies on the CIPC database. Of course. And I think the starting point must be understood is that dormancy or being dormant is not a definition within the Companies Act. So for the audience, it's very important to understand that the legislation for companies, for the registration of companies and the maintenance and their compliance obligation with CIPC is totally different from that of such, right? So we may have terminology that sounds similar, but it may have different context. So I think we just need to clarify that. So on the company side, on the CIPC side, is it must be very important to note that we register companies and maintain and deregister leg place into liquidation on a daily basis. So our register literally updates second per second. So with that continuous movement of new companies, we also have got procedures whereby People voluntarily apply for deregistration or we as the CIPC would put them into deregistration because of the non-filing of something that's called annual returns. It's like a driver's license for your car to be on the road for your business. And that will trigger an, an, the idea or the threshold that this company may not be in business or conducting business in the environment. And that triggers then what we call an AR, an annual return deregistration. But just to quickly come back, in the Companies Act, there is no definition of dormancy or dormant. And it must be clearly understood, and that's one of the key compliance aspects, is even if your business, your company, your CC, your co-op, is not conducting business, actual business, it's not trading, it doesn't have contracts, it still has a legal obligation in terms of the Companies Act, the Co-ops Act, and the Close Corporations Act to comply with legislative requirements. So therefore, even though the business may not be doing business in the real world, they still have an obligation to submit certain information and requirements with the CIPC on their company side. So that being said, is that, as I said, we register thousands of companies. We are actually in the process of actually doing our yearly count of registrations. But we average around about half a million company registrations per annum for the last couple of years. And we also do like 30,000 deregistrations in a month. So this continuously move. For the benefit of your listeners and yourself, I had some statistics extracted this morning from our company's registry. So as it stands as per this morning, we have just under 3 million companies, CCs, and co-ops that has got an active status, meaning we assume that they're still doing business. So that's it's like 2.9 million. Then I'm not going to go into the smaller statuses that we do. We've got about 1.3 million uh, companies and close corporation in what we term the annual return deregistration process. So that's where we trigger it because of that business license, that renewal that has not been submitted and paid for with the CIPC. And then, of course, we have got in the past decade or so, we have pretty much also deregistered about 2.7 million companies and close corporations. So our registry 
constantly changes through all of these statuses. And for the small business um, owner, it's very key to monitor their data with a CIPC. We've got a wonderful intergovernmental website called the Biz Portal, www.bizportal.org.za, where we've got a lot of free services and link up for small businesses to help them. They can check their statuses on there. Um, we're also very, very active on social media. So CIPC can be followed via Twitter and Facebook whereby we've got dedicated team members that actually deals with inquiries from that platforms. We actually post information of what's happening in the company's environment, compliance obligations through that platforms. Uh, so we've got a lot of things that actually is going on at the CIPC regarding small businesses. Thank you for painting that data picture for us, Krista. But let us check back a bit. You mentioned the CIPC's automatic deregistration process. But what factors does the CIPC consider when deciding which companies to place under deregistration and which ones not? Right. So for we call that a deregistration. So the legislation on the company side, on the CIPC side, makes provisions for a couple of processes. But the two main ones is what we term the voluntary deregistration process, where that's where the directors of a company or the members of a close corporation decide, you know what, I'm closing down my business. I have sold off all my assets. I've sorted out all my liabilities. That includes such, by the way, and any property that may be held, movable property, that's all sorted. I'm sitting now with an empty shell. And then they will actually uh, notify us by writing a letter with some supporting documentation for us to say, we're not doing business, there's no liabilities, please do register. And then we will start off that process. So that's called what we term in CIPC, just to make a distinction between all our processes as voluntary deregistration. It gets kickstarted by the business themselves. Then you know, the other one is what we call annual return deregistration. So that is whereby, as I stated, a company or a business uh, that's registered as a company or a close corporate or a co-op has duties to file annual renewal to say, I'm still on the road, I'm still doing business and update their data with the CIPC. That's what we call an annual return. So the legislation says if you have failed to file an annual return for two successive years, so let's say you are registered today, Next year today, your annual return will become due. So then in 2025, when you have not uh, submitted on time, then we've got an automatic system. It goes and checks whether you have filed this, this annual return or not. And if the company has not, or the CC has not filed its annual return and paid for it, it's, it's a fee carrying service, then the system automatically kickstarts and puts the entity into what we call the annual return deregistration process. Now, once you've placed into this process, which currently we're sitting at 1.3 million in this process, and we have just deregistered the end of March, uh, just over 600,000 for non-compliance, then you've still got some time. You don't have to worry. You're an annual return deregistration process. Your business is still active. It, or not active. It's still alive on the CIPC registry. And once you're in that process, you just have to file your annual returns via the CIPC electronic platforms, and the system will automatically put you back into business. Also during this AR process is that we issue you with notifications. By law required to send you a letter to say, we've placed you into deregistration, please comply. If you don't comply, we will continue with final deregistration. So if they continue not to file annual returns, eventually we will finally deregister them. But very interesting on annual returns itself is that we as CIPC send companies and CCs a reminder in the month that the annual return becomes due. We send an email to all the active directors and uh, members to say, hello, it's that time of the year. It's time for your annual return to file. If you've got any questions, give uh, give us a call or a shout via our ticketing system or then just file. But the condition for that is in order to receive that reminder. And a lot of companies, we need to have the active email address of the directors and the members. And a lot of directors and small business owners 
actually forget to update the CIBC via the relevant process to make sure that we've got the correct contact details for the company, the CC, as well as the directors and members. So one of the key things is that that, that small business owners must kindly be remembered is to regularly refer to as a CIBC and to make sure that we've got your correct details on record so that we can actually notify you of changes. So once that process has been triggered by a company failing to submit their um, annual returns for two consecutive years, how long then does it take for the company to cease to exist on the database? All right. So from the starting point, uh, CIPC will track businesses whether they're dormant or are not dormant. If they're finally deregistered or dissolved, we continuously have that information on our registry. So even if you are triggered, we still still maintain that information. Very interesting, we still have got companies on our register dating from the 1800s, signed by Paul Krieger. <laughs> so, yes, and we keep that information indefinitely because you can reinstate it any time. So, basically what happens, if you have not filed your annual return for two consecutive years, the system does trigger an automatic referral. So, it's not done by hand by a staff member deciding. It's a system that we run through our registry. But once you are in the ARG registration process, it does not mean that your legal entity has stopped you existing law. You are still able to trade and conduct business up to the point of final deregistration. So while you're in the annual return deregistration process, and let's say, for example, you go to the bank and we've got, we work very closely with Sash and the banks and certain stakeholders. If your bank then will pick up, but listen, you're on ARD registration, they will most of them will remind you to say, listen, please go and file your annual returns with the CIPC. So in that case, you just file your annual returns on our electronic platforms and the system will automatically take you out of the annual return deregistration process and put you in a state as what we call active, meaning that we don't have anything that triggers that you are concerned that you're not ending or the business is ending its life cycle. So now let's get to the process of someone voluntarily coming to you and saying, okay, I'd like to deregister my company. What processes then do they have to follow to ensure that they can do that properly? All right. So deregistration, On again, I'm, I'm going to clarify for your audience, I'm now talking about companies legislation, not such, all right, is that you should be an empty shell. So your business vehicle must not owe such anything. There should not be any immovable property. Your bank account should be empty. You should not have employees. You should have met all your obligations in terms of other government organizations like UIF and Compensation Fund before you come and apply for deregistration. So deregistration of a company or a CC refers that there's nothing in this legal vehicle anymore. It's empty. There's nada. So the first step that people have to do is to make sure that finish up all that items that it has, that it doesn't have outstanding contracts, it doesn't have outstanding tax duties with SAR, it doesn't have outstanding duties with workman's compensation, it does not have employees. So they need to make sure that this entity is an empty shell. Then they can write us a letter. The requirements are on our website. So you write us a letter with certain content to it. The majority of active directors and members have to sign this letter. There must always also be a tax clearance certificate to say that all tax affairs with such is up to date and there's no challenges there. We need the certified ID copies. Certified ID copies should not be older than three months uh, of those that are applying for the deregistration. So then they can do that. That information can then be emailed to an email address, which is deregistrations at cipc.co.za. That application then goes into our electronic systems. And our we've actually got a system whereby it runs over our mailbox, this dedicated mailbox, and convert the email with the attachment to an electronic image, which we will then double check against our registry. Please note, we do check that the people that signed the letter are actually on is actually an active director or member with the CIO, on the CIO company's registry. And um, so we double check that. We put you into the deregistration process. There is no fee associated for applying for voluntary deregistration. We put you into the process. We do send some legal notifications. And if we don't receive any objections to the voluntary deregistration in a period of four months, 
then we will uh, attach a status called final deregistered. Then at the point of final deregistration, that's when the legal entity has stopped to exist. So that's the process for a voluntary deregistration. How long does it take for CIPC to finalize that if everything checks out um, that has been um, submitted by the, the respective persons? It takes approximately four months. For everything to be completed and to finalize the company as a non-legal entity. That's correct. Because remember, we um, just to, to refresh, we place you into the status of deregistration and then we also have to send notifications. So we send out letters that we have to post and we run that system every two weeks. Then we have to wait a certain period of time before we can actually final deregister. So that's why we work on around about four months for deregistration to go into final. The annual return is a little bit tricky. We've been struggling as you can see from what we stated regarding the volumes that we're dealing with, we have lagged in that area, but it's on our business strategy for this financial year to improve that process so that we can actually, once you are in an ARD registration process, that we can fast track that also to anything between four to six months. So we should we will be automating that process also in the next financial year to improve the timelines for annual return final deregistration. And then what happens when, um, you mentioned that majority of directors need to be in agreement and sign the initial letter, but what happens when, um, let's say, directors of the company have maybe passed or cannot be found, no longer can't be tracked anymore? What process then should those that are available follow to make sure the process is concluded successfully? It's a real factor that people pass away and then they need to be changes. But what needs to be understood as understand is, is that outside of the deregistration processes that we have, I'm going to talk to companies first. They are slightly different than CCs. So the law is very clear on companies to say that if there's a change in directorship, let's say, for example, a director passes away, there's a legal duty on that company. The remaining directors will then constitute uh, the company to actually notify the CIPC of the change. As soon as a, a director passes away, they have to go onto our website. It's a called a call 39. They actually go and then they have to update the registry to say that this person has passed away. And these are still the active directors. So there is a duty on them to follow that first. In the case where a director has disappeared that they cannot trace, the Companies Act makes provision for a different process. That's where the remaining directors can actually have a meeting and then actually go through the process of, of saying this person has absconded. We've given him notice as per the information that we have. He has not come forward to actually deal with. And then on the remaining directors, will then remove that director off as an active director. But small businesses must please just refer because we do have, we regularly update our business process as to the requirements. So before we do a directorship change or if you need advice, please refer to our websites for more information as to how that work and what the requirements are. And if you really don't know, they can please, they can actually contact us via our social media platforms and ask the question how they can deal with the situation. Or they can even log a ticket via our online ticketing system or even phone our call center for advice before they initiate the deregistration process. Then for CCs, close corporations, it works slightly different. Is also if the person passes away, we need something called a CK2. But in the case where they cannot find the member uh, of the CC, then they unfortunately will have to go to court for a court order to remove that member off the close corporation before we can process. And that is Krista Kloko, the Senior Manager of Companies and Close Corporations, at the CPIC, giving us a bit more clarity on how to go about the company deregistration process. Thank you once again for your insights, Krista. Thank you so much for giving us up this opportunity. These are the opportunities whereby we learn and we also we increase the compliance and business awareness of the South African small businesses. So we're very thankful for this opportunity. Definitely. We're glad to have had you on the show. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like and follow Small Business Conversations and don't forget to share our episodes. If you want to contribute to the conversation, you can tweet me at machoba underscore A 
or you can email me at smepodcasts at moneyweb.co.za to share your thoughts and suggestions for future conversations. You've been listening to Small Business Conversations with Akona Machoba. To listen to more MoneyWeb podcasts, go to moneyweb.co.za, the MoneyWeb app, or your favorite podcast platforms. MoneyWeb, your trusted source for business and investment insights.